Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Talk and Travel with Lo. This is where we have a platform to speak about everything that goes on in this world as far as the travel industry. All of the good things, the great things, the places to go, the things to see, and everything in life that is there for our experience. And uh, I just want to introduce myself. I am Lo. And I will be your host for this show. And today being my very first episode, I am so excited about this situation. And I'm so grateful that God has blessed me with this. I just want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everyone who's involved. Thank you to Dr. James, who invited me to host my own show. Thank you to Ed, who is our director here at WSUT Radio. And all of my co-hosts and colleagues, um, Sean at the Man Cave, uh, Dr. Uh, excuse me, not doctor, but yeah, Dr. James and King Quill and all of you who are on your own shows. I'm, I'm looking forward to this radio station being an awesome platform for us to share our, our lifestyles and all that is there for all of us and for all of you. And I welcome you to listen to all of our shows. We're all day, every day, seven days a week, enjoy this. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about me. Again, my name is Lo. I'll be your host on this show. And of course, it's named Tra- Talk and Travel with Lo. So here I am. And uh, I'm, I'm, my background is travel agent. And I, I'm, I've been in the industry for a while. I love the industry. There's so much that I have learned and experienced just by becoming an agent. And I want to share it with you guys because I understand and I've come to learn that there are so many of us that are trapped in our own everyday ruts and mundane lifestyles, even though, you know, we do have high points in our, in our days and our lives and everything, but you know, sometimes we just need to take that big, you know, that quick break, something that we can sit back and just regroup, let go of all of our stresses and everyday routines and lifestyles and just lay back. So I do want to start with a quick question, you know, because again, being in the industry, I have to do a lot of research. And in that research, I've learned that there are different things that are put in front of us as a people and, and I'm not talking about just one culture to the next, but I'm talking about the American culture to begin with. We have a lot of boundaries that are placed around us and it's very subtle unless you start to pay attention to things that's going on. Because even if you're watching, say a station like BET, you're only going to get to see certain things and certain lifestyles and so, certain cultures. If you're watching the country music station, TMC, you're only going to get certain lifestyles and certain cultures and certain things. You're not going to get the entire piece of the, the entire pie. You're only going to get a little piece. So what I want to do now with this station and with this platform that I have been blessed with is to expose all of these different pieces of this pie to make one big, beautiful, beautiful, <clears throat> uh, delicacy because we have been taught that each culture is very different and each culture doesn't like the next culture because of the differences where I've learned in, in this world, just in life in general, because I have always been a traveler. I've always been a person who uh, connected with those of different cultures and different nationalities and backgrounds. <clears throat> That's absolutely not true. It's just that All of us have a level of ignorance where it comes down to the next person and the next group that stops us from from opening ourselves up to experience life and experience each other. Because every culture, no matter where you go in the world, every culture wants the same thing. We all want to live the best lives that we can. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be happy. And we all want our children and our families to be protected and loved. That's it. Now, all of us have different ways of getting there. All of us have different paths. But At the end of the day, they all go to the same place. We might serve different gods or recognize our God as a different name, or some, some people don't even recognize God as being the ultimate supreme being. Some people think that science is the way to go. Some people think that spirituality is the way to go. But at the end of the day, 
we're all here together. So why not mix and, and, and get to know each other so that instead of us being a us and a them, we can be a we, a real we. So when we speak of our world and we speak of our areas and everything like that, that has something to do with our world, it's an all inclusive situation. And part of that is by traveling. If you get outside of your everyday boundaries, let's say, you know, because I've been in Atlanta, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a New Jersey, New York native. I mean, I, I do rep my North, but I've been in Atlanta for many years. And what I've come to learn is there are many people that are right here in the metropolitan area who have never really ventured out as far as 50 miles from their city that they were born in. So they have no idea what is out here in this world. They only know what is there for them. And then, you know, the news, of course, the media, I love them and I hate them all at the same time because they, you know, they kind of give you information from uh, one particular standpoint as far as the world around us. That's how they're able to develop our minds into putting our own invisible boundaries on the things that we know about this world. You know, Africans come to this country believing that America is a great place, but they don't understand why African Americans don't see it that way. Well, because African Americans have experienced this country in a way that Africans have not. But if we take the time to sit down and just talk to each other and share with each other, we can meld and begin to rebuild our cultures because a lot of what Africans come to this country with are their cultures, which is something that African Americans kind of don't have. And we need because we're the only group that does not know where we come from, what we are, what our culture is, we just don't know. So one thing I would employ everyone listening to me to do is take one trip. If you only take one trip outside of this country, take a trip back to the African continent, anywhere you want to go, anywhere you want to go. Johannesburg is beautiful, absolutely beautiful in its richness, in its culture, in the way that they live their lives. And, you know, It's something that we can all learn from, not just one group, but for everyone. We can all learn from that. But uh, I digress. I want to go back to uh, my my actual format, (laughs) which, you know, sometimes I'll I'll veer off. So please bear with me. Um, I want to ask a question because, again, going back to the lack of travel that a lot of us, you know, are dealing with. I want to ask a question. How many of my listeners have actually taken a vacation? And I'm not talking about a time when you go back to where you where you're from and you visit your family and your friends or go to a special place to go for a wedding or a special event and then turn around and come back home. I'm talking about a real vacation, that vacation that you see on the com- uh, commercials on TV where you're laying back on the beach, sipping a tropical drink, listening to the birds in the ocean just go right by and you take a, a time out of your day to just be pampered at the local spa. And then turn around that evening and just party hard without any regards to anything else in the world that is going on other than you right there in the moment. How many of us that, uh, you know, are here listening and enjoying this broadcast can say, yes, I've done that. I've got another question for you. How many of you actually have passports? Because looking at the statistics doesn't look like there's very many of us because in the United States alone, there is a, uh, as of the 2010 census, the national census that tells us who's actually documented in this country. Uh, it says that there is 308 billion million, excuse me, 750, yeah, billion, 745 million, 533 people in this country. Now of that, there is, 12%, 12.2% make up the African-Americans, 16.3% are Hispanics, and 6.8% make up 
the everyone else, the Asians, the uh, Native Americans, the Hawaiian Island Pacificers, you know, people like that, our, our, our other brothers and sisters that somehow become um, invisible when it comes down to looking at real statistics. OK, but of all of those 300 billion there's only 18,676,547 that have passports. That leaves a lot of room for people who have just been trapped in the U.S. and not going anywhere, not doing anything. And that to me is kind of troubling because that means that the more that we stay in that same block, Meaning that same area that you live in and only going to work and coming home and every once in a while, go visit your mom and your dad and your cousins and go back home. That means that in an eight trillion dollar travel industry, the majority of that money is coming from very few people in the United States. Now, that being said, African-Americans and the others, as they are called, and the Latinos, Hispanics, pour in so much money into our economy. But we receive or we uh, experience so much less. We, we benefit from so much less of it. We all have to work the hardest to prove that we are just as good. We all have to live in ways where we have to accept and adapt as uh, and, and not just do what we want and experience life and just take it as it is and make it what we want it to be. But yet we don't know what's going on in the next household. How many of us live in a neighborhood and we don't know our neighbors? What happened to that? Why don't we know our neighbors? Is it a fear that someone would find out something that you don't want them to know? Is it for fear that they might know or believe in something that's different from you? Well, guess what? That's a good thing because knowing how other people think and how other people feel, if we can sit down and honestly communicate that with each other, we can learn how to come together as one and actually live harmoniously. Now in a time where, you know, our government, I'm not even, he's not my president. He's their president. I'm, I, I just have to say that once and for all, because I don't acknowledge him as being any type of a leader because mm, he's not. However, this person is causing so much turmoil between our cultures, between our differences, that this place is going to be worse than it was when Martin Luther King and Malcolm X was out here fighting for us. Because guess what? This is on a larger scale. This is not just, a, again, a us and a we. This is a everybody, a us and a them. It's a, it's a we. It's a we. It's all of us. And it's, and it's every culture and it's every background and it's every lifestyle. So I, I think that the best way to kind of combat this is to get out there and experience what life has to offer. Get some travel under your belt. Go out and, and just sink yourself into another culture and find out what makes them who they are so that it can make you a better person. Because guess what? It really does. It opens your eyes and your understanding as well as your acceptance to what is going on in the world. And you never know. You can find some of your best friends, lifelong friends, comrades, people who have your back in another culture. Not to say that anything's wrong with your culture, but we have to start to venture out. This world has so much more to offer us than just what we see every day. Just what we see every day. There, there's so much beauty in this world that it's, it's, it could take the rest of our lives just to see all of it and then some. Okay, so what I really want to do is, you know, again... Let's open up and talk about and and acknowledge all that's going on, because from a person who's from Detroit to a person who's from New Jersey, from South Dakota, from Utah, Arizona, all of us have different experiences. All of us have different 
cultures because there's a culture within every area. Even in your household, there's a culture that is manifested there that you can share with other people and, and,